take off. Please advise. Copy that, 367. Stand by. What is it? This is the story about a forgotten genius, a gifted sculptor, artist, and modern-day Leonardo da Vinci, whose UFO-like invention was the realm of pure science fiction. But it's also a story about this man, his fixation with the past, and living on borrowed time. Last two years, I've been coming to this guy, Randy Hunter's place, where he has built a temple to his obsession, which is this inventor. This is his drawings, blueprints. Okay, how do you find all this? Look at this, man. This is all these letters. Digging, man. <laughs> During his hunt into Weiger's life, Randy discovered something extraordinary. Hand-drawn designs for an exotic aircraft dating back to the 1920s. Alex appeared to have invented the very first flying saucer. That was an amazing find in itself. When I saw the blueprints, it was undeniable that he was the creator. Weiger's called his futuristic flying machine the Discopter. Designed to take off vertically and float on a cushion of air, it was a unique concept, and one he thought cities of the future would make full use of. Weigers patented the Discopter in 1944, and then tried to sell it. He starts sending all of these letters to all kinds of companies, telling them about his invention, As word of the Discopter began to spread, Alex felt the U.S. military stole the idea. It was an accusation they denied. But for Weigers, evidence of the theft was there for all to see, as images of his flying saucer seeped into popular culture, influencing everything from architecture to cars and movies. A two-seater, ready soon, may be the car or chopper of the future. There's this whole flurry of stories. Weiger's first with saucer. A Dutchman says he designed flying saucer 23 years ago. The man who invented the flying disc. He didn't really seem to be after compensation as much as recognition that he'd done something important and wanted a bit of credit for it. Spoiler alert, the disc copter never became a reality. But the flying saucers it inspired live on in Randy's collection of UFO memorabilia. But in Weiger's, Randy discovered a kindred spirit, a man who chose to live by his own rules and who created a legacy using his own two hands. students I have ever had. And you are failing my class. Did you hear about this? The flight operations were temporarily suspended this afternoon after reports of a mysterious aircraft hovering above the airport. I'm going to need the footage from this entire facility. I want all those passengers in conference room A. We now believe that it was a small drone. No way. It's way bigger. When I was a kid, I saw something. These lights outside. It wasn't a drone. The guy on TV was lying. You don't automatically jump to the most extreme explanation. This isn't some textbook problem. This is more complicated than anything you've ever seen before. This terminal is crawling with federal agents. Why would they still be here if they'd figured out what it was? We need to shut him down. 
The FBI is monitoring our computers. Why didn't I see this before? I think it's some sort of signal. That's binary. They're using math as a way to communicate. And if I'm right, he's coming back. There's an opportunity to take a giant leap forward. Everything is riding on it. Come on! What are the most important questions in the world? Is there a God? What happens when we die? Are we alone in the universe? If anyone answered any one of those questions, it would change everything. Now, I want to go, before too much time passes, to this next slide by the General Douglas MacArthur. The nations of the world will have to unite, for the next war will be an interplanetary war. The nations of Earth must someday make a common front against attack by people from other planets. General Douglas MacArthur. It's 1955, October. I was three or four months old. And they already had this plan for a false flag or a false INW threat from outer space that Werner von Braun later spoke of. And now let's listen to Ronald Reagan at the United Nations. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Yes. The only way we can live together in peace is that if we're at war with someone else. I mean, it, this is, you know, of course, batshit crazy. But we, we have something here that is what is called an acculturation process, where over many decades there have been leaders that have been convinced that we have a threat and that the solution to that threat or incursion from other civilizations is to militarize the relationship. Now, interestingly, the same people who benefit from, say, hoaxing the Gulf of Tonkin event in Vietnam, in Vietnam which ex stampeded President Johnson into escalating Vietnam into the quagmire it became that cost trillions of dollars and hundreds of the millions of lives, if you count Vietnamese and Southeast Asians as living humans, which they are, um, or the famous weapons of mass destruction that Saddam Hussein had, which were to justify us going into Iraq, which gave us ISIS, it's all hoaxed. And so you have people who are continuously creating hoax scenarios. And this has actually got a very military sounding bureaucratic term, and it's called a deceptive indication and warning, or a, or a false INW. And that's what the pop culture would call a false flag. And these are concocted in their research projects all the time, and they're put on a storyboard years, and sometimes decades in advance. And the big one is the alien invasion one. And so through the UFO subculture, Hollywood, the media, and the internet, there has been a very well-funded clever disinformation counterintelligence operation that was launched in the 50s to convince people of what you just heard General Douglas MacArthur and Ronald Reagan decades later say was necessary. So then the question, you have to then take everything you ever read, everything you've ever seen, and go, was it real or was it memorats, as they used to say in the commercials? You know, was it, is it real or was it something that was made up for its psychological warfare value, and I'm quoting from a CIA document from 1953. To what extent have we been deceived? And so I think this is why we have to be brutally honest with ourselves. And I have had contact with ETs, and I have also been targeted with what he's describing, both. And I know the difference. And, and I can tell you that it's quite clear the difference. Um, and the electromagnetic weapon systems that can induce an abduction state uh, and then the things they can do are truly terrifying. And the same thing with the mutilations. You know, Dr. John Altshuler 
who was a hematologist, pathologist in Denver, who was the original Snippy the Horse investigator back in the late 60s in Colorado, was a very good friend of mine. And uh, he concluded that those were 100% being done by paramilitary human groups made to look alien because they would frighten people, but they were also getting raw materials for their program life form labs that were in underground bases out there. And they were getting cell types and cells with high mitotic indices and things of that sort, and the tongue and the rectum and the genitals and what have you, uh, because they reproduce quickly. And, but they would masquerade it as a UFO doing it. And he figured that out long ago. And then all of a sudden in the UFO subculture, an alien harvest. Well, no. <laughs> Actually, it's a paramilitary harvest. And we know exactly what they're doing with these body parts. And we know why they're doing it. And they're very happy for people to think it was ET. That's how counterintelligence works. So if you want to study this issue, you cannot leave out you can't just any, take anything at its face value. You have to question what part of it is real, what part of it is hoaxed, and why would they want people to think that there's a threat? What Reagan said, what General MacArthur said. Because, let's get back and follow on with what Paul Hellyer was sharing. How do you justify trillions of dollars in expenditures unless you have a bigger, more powerful enemy?